nobody ever thinks about what anybody doing until a woman decides she don't want to co-parent. Everything is cool. The disrespect is cool. Not spending time with the child. Everything is cool until a woman decides that she don't want to co-parent no more. Now, all of a sudden, you're not thinking about the child. No, like if there's disrespect still in the situation or you need to heal from the disrespect and the things that happen, take that time. I'm telling you now, it is okay. Um, I can't tell you how much I disagree with that. What's up, family? It's your girl, Samantha Lee. And y'all, I am here with yet another video of I've Got Something to Say. And you guys, this, this particular topic, it resonates with me really, really deeply because of my own personal experiences growing up um, and some of my own personal convictions. So this is going to be a spicy episode. I'm going to tell y'all that now. Um, all the energy I got left, I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to leave it on the dance floor. Okay, so pay attention. Um, but before I get into it, there's four things I want you to know. Number one, if you like the content that I'm putting out, if it resonates with you, I would love for you to be part of our fast-growing Game Changer Nation. Just hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free. As While you are at that, you can go ahead and hit that notification bell because that notification bell is going to allow you to see when I'm going live. I, you know, I go live once weekly. I post content almost daily. And I do a long-form content that I, re I release a long-form piece of content every, every Monday. Excuse me. And I don't want you to miss a thing. So go ahead and hit that notification bell as well. Third thing, I've already said it. I go live every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes the, change, the days change, but it's normally every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I would love for you to be a part of that show. I have a great time. We laugh. We tell jokes. We answer questions. We have hard conversations. And your girl can get a little spicy. You already know. Uh, but it, it's a lot of fun. I would love for you to join Game Changer Nation on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and the last thing is that I have an ebook that's for free for you guys um, that will be pinned in one of the comments below. Go ahead and click that link and you'll be part of our email list. That email list is going to update you on all things Love Samantha Lee. In addition to that, it's going to give you a book, a book called the perfect match, avoiding the wrong women. Now, I've had a question last week and it was like, oh, Sam, what are the signs of an emotionally unavailable woman or a toxic woman? I get these questions all the time. And y'all, I wrote a book. OK, you have it now spelled out. You can access it on your phone or on your laptop so that, you know, when you in these dating streets or you in these relationships, you can identify what is toxic, and what is not. And hopefully before you even get into a relationship, you see this book. So you know what to do and what not to do. You know what I'm saying? OK, well, that's everything I got to give you guys. Let's get into the meeting message. So somebody sent me this. Um, it's a post. Normally, I don't do posts. I do like videos and things like that. But somebody sent me this post and um, I wanted to go ahead and play it for you guys and react to it. OK, um, because this is something that, you know, especially today resonates with me deeply. Um, so. Y'all got to thank Pam Pam. Thank you, ma'am. So it says, woman says it's okay for a mother to temporarily cancel co-parenting if the father is disres shows disrespect. It's okay to take your time to heal. So I am going to go to the next. Thinking about the child during those times. Because I want to play it from the beginning. All right. And so, you know, I'm going to pause. I'm going to go back and forth. Um, and I'll, I'll make my picture bigger. Uh, I'll play a little bit, play my picture bigger, and, and go from there. So let's play this content. Let's do it. That time to heal. It's like nobody ever thinks about what anybody doing until a woman decides she don't want to co-parent. Everything is cool. The disrespect is cool. Not spending time with the child. Everything is cool until a woman decides that she don't want to co-parent no more. Now, all of a sudden, you're not thinking about the child. 
No, like if there's disrespect still in the situation or you need to heal from the disrespect and the things that happen, take that time. I'm telling you now, it is okay. Um, I can't tell you how much I disagree with that. And, and, and here's, here's where I'll start with. This is where I'll start and I'll try not to get jumpy real quick. But the first thing is that this, okay, let me preference what I'm, what I'm going to say with this. If there's any cases of abuse that has happened towards the child, um, or abuse that has involved the child in any way, shape, or form. I am not condoning abuse at all, okay? If there is harm that could potentially be caused to the child due to the actions of the other parent in, in its abuse to the child, then I absolutely believe that you should limit your child's access to someone who is potentially harming or abusing your child or you were, are being abused and harmed in front of the child and now the child has to see you be harmed in, in such a way that causes damage or trauma to the child's psyche okay that that is that is paramount because safety all the way around is important extremely important okay you don't want a, a, like if someone is super violent and you have a pickup situation and this person is just hating you or being disrespectful towards you or cursing, you know, just being, I don't know any other word, but abusive towards you and abusing you in front of the child. That's a problem. Okay. That's not going to bring about the best in your children. Okay. We always have to think what is in the best interest of the child. Is it in the best interest of the child? And so in this situation, she's not necessarily bringing up abuse. She's saying that the father is disrespectful towards you, that you have the right or has was disrespectful in the relationship, that you have the right to limit his access to the child until you heal. Absolutely not. You do not have the right because you haven't gotten over your past to limit a child's access to their father. You have absolutely no right to do that because you're doing more damage than good. And you sit here and you act like, oh, well, because I don't, he's doing this to me. I'm, no, that's selfish. That's selfish. You need to get yourself into some therapy. You need to go figure out some coping mechanisms. Maybe you don't need to be there for the pickup and the drop off. Maybe y'all need to do it at the school. But at the end of the day, that is the child's father. And if he is not causing any direct harm to the child, then you need to get over it. You need to get over it. I have looked in the faces of many children that have experienced or felt like they were experiencing rejection from their father that has led to damaging behaviors in their teenage and adult years. And it was really because the mother couldn't get over him. So she limited the access to the child. And therefore, and wherefore, we're dealing with a world of issues we wouldn't have dealt with if, you had, if, if that woman would have gotten out of her feelings and saw that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how I feel about this man. It's not about what what we experience is not about if he cheated on me or not. It's not about if he if, if if he says something wild to me in a text message before the pickup. It's not about that at all. It's what it is about is that my like, I look at it, my daughter, my baby loves her daddy. So I'm not going to limit access to her daddy because she love her daddy. We may have issues, but I'm not going to limit her from her father. What's between me and him is between me and him. Because anything else that impacts your relationship, even if you're somebody watching this and you, you have a child with somebody, but because you're not over the mama or you're not over the daddy, you don't want to call the baby or you don't want to be involved because I, she, the child reminds me of the relationship and I don't want to be involved because of that or whatever that means. Y'all got to get out of y'all feelings. We can't keep allowing feelings to drive the car and then justify it because you don't feel like it. Feelings are not an excuse to, to, to conduct yourself in certain ways just because you feel like it. You know how many people are facing life in prison because they felt like it? You know how many people have their lives have been shortened because of decisions that they made because they feel like it? You can't just do what you feel. That's not a good driver of your behavior.
I'm sorry, y'all. I get hype on this. I get hype on this. No, you're not entitled to limit your child from their father because you don't feel like it. You don't. Because now you're allowing your feelings to start a generational curse or perpetuate a generational curse because you don't feel like it. Get over it. You better not talk negatively about that man in front of her or in front of her or him or whoever, your children. No. Just like that, the other parents shouldn't be doing that either. It's not about you and that person. It's about you and them kids. It's about what is in the best interest of that child. The best interest of that child is to have two present parents. And a healed mother is very important, especially if you're the primary caregiver. You should heal. You should see a therapist. You should figure that out. I believe in Jesus and therapy. I think Jesus and therapy can overcome a lot of different things. But you don't get to sit here and say, oh, well, my kids, until I heal, you don't get to see the baby. Uh, no, uh-uh, that's not how that works. I'm sorry. No, that's not in the best interest of the child. That's in your best interest. That's not in your child's best interest. We've lost sight of what the big picture is. And a lot of times, you guys, when we're hurting, we try to hurt people with what we have on them. Not thinking about how that impacts the child. I'm going to manipulate this variable because this is how I can still get them. I can't get them in the way I used to be able to get them. So I'm going to get them in the only way I have now. And that's access to the child. Naturally, we are, vin we are vindictive individuals. I mean, it just is what it is. The flesh wants to enact revenge. But is that right? No. The Bible says, let God be. He said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And, and every voice raised to accuse you will be silenced. These are the benefits that are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication comes from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. It comes from him. Trust God to be your vindicator. Right now, you are acting your vindication, enacting your own vindication, and thinking that's going to produce a good harvest. It's not. It's not. Let's continue. Like, don't listen to what nobody got to say. Well, you got to think about the child. Won't nobody thinking about that child when you was being disrespected. Won't nobody thinking about that child whenever somebody was putting your life at risk and your child's life at risk and stressing you out. Nobody, I honestly. See, that, that's where, okay, putting your life at risk, putting a child's life at risk. Okay, now you have a valid, there's validity to that. If you're putting somebody's life at risk or you're putting the baby's life at risk, that is a variable to be considered. Like I said, abuse is a no-go. I will never condone abuse. Abuse, you shouldn't be abusing anybody. M women should not be abusing men. Men should not be abusing women, period. Okay? So abuse, I do not condone. But if we're talking about, he sent me a text message that made me mad, or he cheated on me in a relationship, and so I, he ain't going to get the babies, or he making me mad right now, so I ain't going to let him. I'm going to control the access because I'm mad. Or because he did something to hurt me, that's different. But if it's impacting the child, then we've got a valid concern. Okay? But you also have to prove that. You can't just say that and do that. If he has custodial rights, you would have to prove in the court of law that he is a danger to the child. Otherwise, you are enacting your own legal decision making when you have a shared responsibility between the father and you, especially if you are still requiring him to pay a child support. He is then entitled to have access to his children unless you have indicated in the court of law with evidence that he is a danger to his child. Otherwise, he's, he gets to see his babies. But I will say that if it's putting 
your child's life, well-being at risk, that's different. That is different. That is a whole different ballgame. As I started before, abuse is a no-go. Okay? Abuse is a no-go. But if I'm just, oh, he he sent me a wild text message before the pickup and he think he's still going to get his child. No, that's not, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about here. If he's cursing at the child or, you know, destroying the self-esteem of the child or whatever, whatever, or harming the child in any way, shape or form, I, I'm riding with you. But if it's just because you mad, because he says something slick about you, to you. That's that's not grounds for you to limit access to your child, especially not him. So with that being said, please feel free to take all the time you need to heal. Please feel free to take all, especially if disrespect is going on now. A lot of people make it seem like it's we, we have to define disrespect because you can't just say disrespect is such a broad term. People feel disrespected and they weren't disrespected. They just are sensitive to certain things and that caused them to feel disrespected when they weren't actually disrespected. So we need to define disrespect. Disrespect may not be abuse. Abuse may not be disrespect. Okay, well, no, abuse is always disrespect. But to me, we don't have a good understanding of disrespect. Is disrespect because he with another woman now? Is disrespect because he done cheated on you throughout your relationship? Is disrespect because he sent you a nasty text message before the, the pickup? Is disrespect because he didn't answer your text message on time? People got varying levels of disrespect. So I need a better definition to understand, number one, is he causing harm to the baby? That's why I don't, I'm still not there. It's like, it's it's very much about me, 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 not the baby at all. So I'm still not clear on how this is impacting the child. You, you gave a little bit like, oh, especially put my life at risk and the baby's life at risk. Okay, baby's life at risk. We're on to something there. But right now we just talking about, oh, he disrespected, disrespected. What's disrespect? Define disrespect because disrespect to everybody is different. We, I'm going I'm to need a little bit more than that. All right. So let's let's keep going. We need to define disrespect. Women, we just supposed to take everything for the betterment of the child. No, the betterment of the child, especially. No, no, no. You can set boundaries. You can set boundaries, but not limit access to the child. Because right now you limiting access to the child is actually you enacting your own revenge. You can set boundaries with communication. Once it gets disrespectful, you don't respond. If you text me about anything besides the baby, I'm not going to respond. Like you can have set firm boundaries without limiting access to the child unless you can prove or you, you have witnessed or there is active abuse towards the child or harm towards the child, imminent harm towards the child that you are protecting the child from. If it's just he sit, he's being disrespectful towards you. Yeah, you don't have a case. You don't. But anyway. If you are the caregiver, the betterment of the child depends on you. Yeah. Uh, not at all. I No. It, if the betterment of the child depends on you, then you have to be thinking for the child and not you. Correct? So you can't say what's in my best interest is what's in the baby's best interest because y'all interests are the same. The baby was created after a union with a man, right? And that may or may not have worked out. Now, you you may say that's not my person. We done. But that baby is still connected to you and to that man. So although your interest is to keep it moving, that baby is like, that's my daddy and that's my mama. When you make your interest, the baby's interest is where we have the problem because y'all interests are not the same. Y'all interests are separate. You don't need to have nothing to do with him outside of the baby, but you chose to have a baby with this particular partner. And so now with that comes a responsibility to allow that man, especially because it seems like he wants to have access to a child, Access to his child, unless you can prove that he is a danger to the child. That's really where we are. 
A lot of women, because they mad at the man, they want to just, oh, well, I care for the child most of the time, so I could just eliminate his access to him because I'm mad at him. And until we good or until this happens, that is not in the best interest of the child. You have gotten lost in what you want versus what our responsibility becomes as a mother. As a mother, it becomes about the baby. What's in her best interest? Now, I can think about even with choosing schools. My best interest is, let me save some money. But her best interest is I'm going to put her in the best school I can possibly put her in because I want her to have the best chance at the best life. Now, my interest is to save money. Her interest is to excel. And so, yes, I'll take another job. Yes, I'll do a, a 50, 11 different things, little odd jobs here and there to make sure my baby goes to the best school that she could possibly go to. Again. Our interests are the same, but we have to start thinking about, and we have to, we, and even in the school example, I have to make a sacrifice. Her father will have to make a sacrifice for her to go to that school. We will have to make decisions to accommodate our choice for her to go to this particular school. It's a sacrifice we're making, but we're willing to make it because that's in her best interest. So in this situation, it's the same. Our interests change when we have children. It's not about you. It's about that child. And what you want and what that child wants or what that child needs versus what you need are two different things. You may not need to be with this man. You may not need to talk to this man. But that baby does. That child does. Let's keep going. The betterment of the child depends on you as the mother. Yeah. So with that being said, take all the time you need and just honestly set boundaries. Like I can't say this enough. Setting boundaries will let you know who you're dealing with and will let you know why they're dealing with you. Set those boundaries. It's either one of two things going to happen and set healthy boundaries. I will say that they either going to get in line or they're going to get gone. And whichever one they do should be OK with you. And a lot of men be feeling well, regard or even people okay. feel like well, regardless. Okay, well, boundaries I'm good with. And to your point, you may lose people or not based upon the boundaries you set. Fair point. I have nothing, no issue with that. If your issue is that your child's father is being disrespectful towards you, that might be in text messages, communications, whatever then you limit the communication with the child's father. You have some self-control. There's conversations you feel like are going left. You don't engage. You getting the baby or not? Is this about the child or no? We, are you getting the baby today or tomorrow? You're not? Okay. So what, this is about me and you. I don't need to engage in this conversation. But if it's about the baby, we do need to engage in this conversation. Those are boundaries. Not... You made me mad with that last text message or that last post or your last story. And so I'm not going to let you have the baby. That's not a boundary you set because now you're setting a boundary that is unfair and not in your child's best interest. That is in your best interest because you're trying to enact revenge on your past, which we need to do in our culture is truly heal and not pretend like we're healing because we're with other people. We need to actually take the time and the energy to actually forgive ourselves, forgive the other people and move forward. Because at this point in time, this has become about you, your comfortability, and not about what is in your child's best interest. So the fact that what happens, you still have to maintain a co-parenting relationship. No, I don't. Y you do. When you lay down with somebody and have a baby with them, we become co-parents. One is a mama. One is a daddy. Co-parents. That happens in every single situation. Now, some fathers may not choose to be involved and some mothers may not choose to be involved. But regardless, two people created a child. And we are now co-parents to this child. So you being mad and you feeling spicy is not a good reason to keep your child away from their father. 
period. When you chose to have a baby with this man, you chose to be a co-parent with him. That's what the cho that's the choice you made. And here's the thing. As you start to heal, you can be like, you know what? That person wasn't good for me, but they a good mama or they're a good daddy because you've healed. And you can like, you know what? I see that. That probably wasn't for me, but they're a good father. And I'm not going to limit my that child's access to the father, right? That's when we start to see it with healed eyes versus with wounded eyes that because somebody's hurt you, they're just a terrible person and they're just not good for nobody. No, they could be a great father and not a good man to you. That's possible. Just like they, they, they could be a great mother. You'd be like, you know what? Objectively speaking, you're a great mother, but you're not a good woman for me. That's what healed vision does. When you're still in a space of unhealed, this is how you see. No. If you're not no good for me, if you're not with me, then you're not a good person. And because you rejected me or you hurt me or you betrayed me or I feel some kind of way about you, I just disregard you all the way as a person. And that's broken vision. It means you're not over that person. You're not over it. It may not hurt anymore, but you're not over them. That's the reality. That's the reality. It isn't until we can reconcile our experiences truly and be able to compartmentalize them in a healthy way that we truly heal. Let's keep moving forward. No, I don't. Like that opens the door for people to disrespect you. And I experienced this myself. <laughs> and honestly, that's what I say as women. Like I just want women to do better overall. So then that way, when they come across a woman like me, it don't look like I'm being difficult. Yeah, because one thing about it, if respect is not on the table, I will not be at the table, child or not. And a lot of people feel like, well, other women do it. You know what I'm saying? This is how it's been happening. You know, I can disrespect my child's mother. I can talk to her crazy and we can still have a, a copacetic co-parenting situation. We would not have anything if respect is not on the table. I am not the one or the two. I am none of the numerics. When it comes about my respect. So, so in this situation, uh, it's become more clear. It's become much more clear that this is about you. This is about you and your ego saying, I'm not going to be disrespected. Do I fit? Do I condone a man disrespecting a woman? No. Do I condone a man talking to her while calling her out her name? Absolutely not. I absolutely do not condone that. But that is not a justification for you to to limit access to the child because you're mad at how he talks to you. Because I can, I, I don't know your communication with him, but if you're not for the one or the two or none of the numerics, I can already tell that you might be going back and forth. It might be one of those types of situations. Again, regardless of what you say or what he says or the words you share with each other, that's not enough of a justification to keep your child away from their parent, their God-given parent. Now, if it's causing harm to the child, that parent is causing harm to the child. That parent is causing harm to the child. That is different. But when we're talking about you just mad because he, he may say some stuff and that's not okay either. Neither parents should be saying wild stuff to each other. How does that, you know, produce the best situation for your child? It doesn't. Got to get over that. If there's some feelings of anger and bitterness, you're not over the situation. Period. You still got this little spicy energy. You might think, oh, I'm angry. I'm done with him. You're not. Nine times out of ten, I talk to a lot of women. Oh, I can't stand him. And he do this and he do that. No, you still want him. Because guess what? Every time I'm in those situations, y'all, where women just upset, I can't stand him. And you know what else he did? And you know what else he did? And you know what else he did? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. A couple months later, you know, he texts me. He said he missed me. I don't know what to do, girl. I, hold up. Hold up. You, you don't give me, you don't give me a whole thesis, a whole dissertation about how he ain't nothing. But in a couple months, when he comes to you the way you've been wanting him to come at you, now 
Now you considering going back, spinning the block because you weren't really over them. You weren't. If you have that anger, you have that angst, you have that emotion, anybody can get an emotion like that from you, you're not over them and you're not over the situation. The problem with our today's, today's society, our society today, is that we got a lot of people that think that just simply because you go in front of a therapist, which is a whole other situation, or just simply because you go to church, or simply because it's been several years, he, he, time in and of itself does not heal all wounds. Quality time, practicing, learning, taking accountability, revealing so you can actually be healed, that's what heals. That's quality time. Not enough of us are spending enough quality time healing in between relationships. We just jump from relationship to relationship to relationship, and we have not done the proper work with ourselves. I'm not saying the only way to heal is through therapy. It's a great modality, but it's not the only way. But just awareness and taking accountability and learning from your mistakes and moving forward in a stronger, more calculated fashion, those are that's, that's how you heal. I believe in Jesus and therapy. I do. Shoot, I sat with my therapist today. And listen, I I reached another thought that I had not thought. I had had learned something about myself that I had never known. That's the beauty of therapy. It, It exposes and it connects and it allows me to see, okay, that's why I do this. And so when I do this, it's not because of that. It's because of this. Because otherwise than that, you're thinking of it in a broken way. Therapy helps us to compartmentalize it so that we're able to see it clearly and therefore respond in a more calculated way. Okay? It helps us to function at a higher capacity, at a higher level. When we're when we're all over the place and our minds are all over the place, we don't produce, we do not come across well. When our minds are discombobulated, our actions are discombobulated. And in this situation, we so lost in our pain that we can't even see what's in our best interest of our child. When we are so emotionally intoxicated, so consumed with self, we can't even see, you know what? It probably is in my child's best interest. If their father wants to be involved and loves their child, it's probably in my child's best interest for that parent to be involved, regardless of how I feel about them regardless of where our relationship is right now. That's a father that wants to be involved. And there's children that have fathers that don't want to be involved. But I am blessed to have a a man that wants to be involved with my child. And so instead of allowing that to occur, you're going to say, no, I'm mad at him. He said something wild in the text message. And you, like I said, you may look at it as disrespectful, But the world doesn't because you might be trigger happy. That's what I call it. When you, you just like a, some people, it's like you walking on eggshells. Oop. Oh, that's a trigger. Oop. That's another. Oop. And it's just, you're doing this little dance of like trying to dance around the triggers because they haven't healed. They haven't taken enough time to heal, to recognize their own triggers and manage themselves. Everything else everybody does is disrespectful. And so they isolate themselves in order to prevent themselves from actually getting hurt. But they're really doing themselves a disservice, causing themselves unnecessary pain over and over and over and over and over again, experiencing abandonment over and over and over and over again, because I'm not taking accountability. And I'm not choosing to heal for real this time. Now my children have to pay for the choices that I'm making. That's not fair. We should be trying to break generational curses. We should be wanting the best for our children, not acting out of broken and causing them to have an unnecessary unnecessary separation from a primary parent. Again, abuse is a no-go. Harm to the child is a no-go. If this person is in danger of causing harm to this child, is a no-go. If this person is a danger to their to the child and abuse is occurring, I'm not, I want, I can't say it enough. I am not saying that that is to be condoned. It is not for you to turn a blind eye to. Absolutely not. What I am saying is, if the man says something wild to you, 
but he's loving to his child or he's present for his child or he and his child loves him, then there is no reason why you get in the way of that. You don't have a good reason. If it's only about you and his relationship versus his and the baby's relationship, because it really isn't about you anymore. It's about that child. You need to heal and mature. We be going to we, like we can we can do it for other things. We can go to work and you might have that coworker that says something slick to you, but you still going to show up because there's a paycheck tied to it. But be, but when it comes to these kind of relationships that are way more complex. We can't put our emotions to the side. For what is in the best interest of that child. We can do it in we go to the church with somebody being disrupted. We go to high school. We can go to school. We can go here. We can do all these different things. And people might be disrespectful, disrespectful, disrespectful. But when it comes to the child and how that impacts them for not have, from them not having a present parent, we just, well, I, he, 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 he need to learn how to talk to me then. That might be true. I'm not negating that. But that's still not enough of a reason to keep him from his child. Period. We need to grow up, set boundaries, get over it, and do what is in your child's best interest, not what is in your best interest. And not, I don't even know if it's your best interest, but what you want to do. It's not an excuse. All right, y'all. This is a long one. It's a passion point for me. Um, so go ahead, comment below. Tell me what you think. Tell me your thoughts. Um, like I said, I'm sorry. You know, I get spicy, y'all. I can't help it. It's just things that I'm really passionate about. I just can't help but give you this energy. Um, but I want to hear what you have to say about this. Um, again, I go live every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, I'm posting content almost daily. I don't want you to miss a thing. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, you guys. I love y'all. And I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you guys. Go ahead. Hit the subscribe button, y'all. Let's not just be every once in a while. Let's become family, okay? Friends that are family, okay? Join my family today. 